A little while ago, I put out a video about making custom drawing templates in Alibre. Recently, I've had some questions of how to do more of custom drawing templates in Alibre, so let's jump into it. This is a custom drawing template that I have made, largely using the uh, principles in the first video that we went through. So if you didn't watch that, go ahead, run back, watch the first video about custom drawing templates, and then we find ourselves here. And one thing that might be a little bit striking is that we have a projection symbol here. How do we make a projection symbol like that? Well, we can make symbols by right-clicking on a sheet and saying activate a sketch. And let's say that I want to make another interesting symbol, right? So what do I do if I want this to be a symbol that I can put into a drawing? Well, I'll go with insert custom symbol and create custom symbol from here. It'll have me select what figures I would like and we'll say okay. Uh, it says I haven't set an anchor point and uh, what does that mean? Well, for ease of use, I would highly recommend setting an anchor point because otherwise, zero, zero will be down here. And when you go to insert this symbol, you know, your mouse will be down here and this will be in the middle of your screen and it won't be that fun. So we'll set our X value to this point and notice it fills in my Y value as well. So now I'm able to anchor it at the very center. We'll go ahead and save that to any location. Right? Maybe if you're running on a Libre PDM, you'll have a uh, place in your library for drawing templates and symbols or something like that. Well, now that we have that symbol taken care of, I can go ahead and delete this. And then anytime that I wish to add a symbol into my drawing of any kind, then I'll say insert custom symbol and I'll go ahead and navigate to it. And there we are. So I can go ahead and scale this to maybe a quarter of the size that it was in both the X and the Y. And there I've been able to insert my symbol. So that's how we can insert our own custom drawing symbols. Pretty cool because now I've got one that I can add whenever I want to whatever drawing that I would like. Another important thing that we might want to go through is layers. There are some other videos that go through drawing layers. There is some other content that goes through layers to a good amount of detail. But here we can talk about what kind of layers we might want to have associated with our template. So first we'll get out of our active sketch and we've got this layers button right here. And I've added a few custom layers of my own. So for example, I've got this table up here as a revision history. You'll notice this table isn't part of my template, like what I've sketched, but it's rather an active table that I've created, right? So I've clicked on new table right here, added a table that I've formatted as my revision history. And anytime I have a new revision, I can go ahead and insert another row and make another entry into my revision history that way. Depending on what your document flow practices might be, this may always be one single row to show the last revision. And then if you go to the drawing that was released before that, it will have the, re the revision before and so on and so forth as a way to save space. That may or may not apply to you, but if you need multiple rows, this table can sure provide it. And this table uh, doesn't seem to have any problems being a part of your drawing template. I have a few others, right? So if I want to open up a revision status of sheets, I simply take this and toggle this layer as visible. And when I do, another table shows up for a revision status of sheets outlined in uh, ASME standards. Uh, I also can do watermarks, and we can do this as, say, a note or as a table. But I might want to say draft here, and I might want to make it large text, we might want to make this color red. And I might suggest using something that has light in the font, maybe Corbel light or something like that. And once again, I'll highlight this text to make sure my changes are captured. 72, right? 
and we'll say draft. And of course we can put this in some layer. I've got a draft watermark layer here. And you'll notice that goes invisible. So I can show my draft watermark here. The other thing I do is I have this table over here that I can drag over if I would prefer to have that. So you can use a table or a note um, for different layers. I've had the best look with uh, tables myself. It has the behavior that I want a little bit better, but go ahead and play around and see what works best for you. Next, I might want to format some things. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a view of a part. So with this bottle, and I do not suggest having parts saved as a part of your drawing template, of course. Your drawing views should be pretty unique. But just to illustrate what we're doing here, right, perhaps I want to have some special format for dimensions like this. So we can go to File, Drawing Properties, and uh, under Dimensions, there's a whole host of things that I can do. I can make this, say, have a precision of 5. I can go to my units, and I can change my units if I wish. I can control my leading and trailing zeros, depending on if you're working in ANSI or ISO. And I can adjust my line and arrow format, because sometimes you might have a tricky drawing view and you want to cut down on some of these dimensions, or increase them. And then I can adjust my font. So perhaps I want to have a strange, goofy font for some reason. I can add dual dimensions to my drawing if I'd wish to have uh, my inches shown also with a millimeter counterpart. And I can adjust how I do my circular dimensions and my ordinate dimensions and foreshortened. So lots of dimension editing tools here. It's pretty self-explanatory. We'll apply that and see kind of a goofy font. <laughs> if that's what I want for my template, I certainly can do it. So I can deactivate my sketch, delete my view, right, because I've made those changes. Now with those properties edited, uh, you know, there's one other thing that I should show. And that is, if I tend to use a font like this for my watermarks, and I want this to be all big, this is just a quick warning here. Notice I earlier I said use a font that was light. This is the opposite of light. It has very, very thick lettering. And this looks great as it is, but if I export this, You'll notice that uh, we don't have the transparency anymore. So using a font with light, thin letters would be best to not obscure things around. And even better is to maybe put the watermark in some corner somewhere if, uh, if you have that. So keep that in mind that uh, it might look really good in the editing environment, but you don't want to fall into a trap of exporting it. And you know the PDF exporter makes it lose transparency. Uh, so, that is with watermarks. But we might also want properties. In fact, we might want to have properties in subsequent sheets that fill themselves out. If we want something to be filled out on multiple sheets, all uniform, I do suggest using that as a property on the part level. For instance, I'll come over here and we'll say, Edit 3D Model. So we'll put our self-filling things out on the part model level. We'll go to File, and on this menu, you can see that we have things like part number, version comment, description, but we also have custom properties with a list of things that we could add. So I'll go to Manage Properties here. And I'll add a custom property. Maybe I want to add the title of my part. 
Now I simply fill out what I want to be my title here. And then I'll run on back to my part. In fact, I can even close my part and save my changes. Now, if I want to edit my template, I'll now go ahead and delete my view. I can go to Properties by uh, activating a sketch on the sheet. And I'll add in a uh, field, rather, with a property value. And I can see my custom properties. This is the property that I just added and will apply. So I can move that right to where my title is. And I'll go ahead and save my template. Notice I'm still editing my template because I have my a title up here. That is my template, right? So we're saving to my template, making sure that I don't have any imported parts or they might show up when I use this drawing template. And now let's go use this drawing template. So let's say I'd like to make a drawing of my mask. Well, I can go to my title here and fill this out. And then we'll go to send to make drawing of this design. And I'll make sure to save before I send to. I'll go browse and find my sheet template. I can give this a drawing number if I would like. And then everything else has this default value for a system tag is blank, appropriate value we set on view sheet creation. That means that all of these values are linked with something that will give it a value once we make our drawing. It's automatic so we don't have to worry about it. And I'll set my value here. You'll notice now that I have my title already automatically placed in here, Mask of Majora. So if you have some custom field that you want to show up on multiple sheets, I would say make a property out of it and then put that property on your sheet too or whatever other format that you would like to have. This gives you the added advantage of being able to have this information travel with your part file as well. So it's all in a place where it can be put onto multiple sheets and with your part. Now when I go to dimension this, say I want to dimension from here to here, you'll notice I still have my wacky font and so my dimension specifications and dual dimensioning and all of that from my template carries over into this new drawing. So that should be more information to play with when we work with these custom drawing templates. I hope this was helpful and please subscribe to the Libre channel. We'll see you in the next one.